Welcome back. And if you joined me late today, my special guest is Major Michael Middleton, United States Marine Corps, now retired, and he and his family make their home in Greenville. And he's talked about his career as a helicopter pilot mm -hmm. and, and as a helicopter pilot for the helicopter that flies the President of the United States, wherever he goes. So that in itself is an enormous responsibility. And I want to share something with you because I think this, is, this goes along with what our honored guest has been talking about. We're talking about leadership. This came from ancient Greece, and it's a quote. A democracy cannot exist permanently as apathy among its citizens increases. The democracy collapses to a dependency and then bondage. So we need leadership, we need strength, we need character, and like our forefathers, faith in God. I agree. I couldn't agree more. And I think um, it's funny you reading that just now. I'm, I'm reading a book on the 12 Caesars. Um, it's written about the Roman times and the, when the Caesars came to power and basically they took power away from the Senate. But the, the biggest thing I've learned in reading that book is, and I'm, I'm no historian, so I may be getting this slightly off, but what struck me is that the power as it flowed away from the Senate of the Republic of Rome yeah. and was granted into these Caesars, um, they were given total power. But you know what? They didn't necessarily use incredible brute force and came in like an overthrow or a coup d'etat. It was actually given them. The, the public demand to say, I want you to have this power. Take it. And when I hear you talk about the apathy and that slow move from dependency into bondage, mm -hmm. you know, that does occur. And they say that that's the, you know, that's the fault or the, the Achilles heel of democracies is that, you know, those people will then demand to be taken care of. That's right. Oh, I want you, the government, and I see you as my only um, I want, I want ability. I want you to take care of me. Yes, yeah. I want you to take care of me. So I, I think, I think we're there. And whether it's a mixture, whether we're demanding it and we're demanding it or wanting to cede our power or we're being kind of coaxed and, and, and drawn to the water, as they say, you know, to give it up. I'm not sure where we stand right there, but I think there's enough leaders out there. And, you know, where's the leaders like Washington that, you know, he could have been a king. Of he, he could he have refused. been a dictator. He, 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 he stepped refused any away of that. from the table. He pushed away from the trough. Where are those leaders? I would love to see that. Where are the leaders who will stand? And even though they, though they know they may lose in personal gain, where are they to speak up against power? Even if they're a senior general, even if they're a senior CEO of a corporation or a senior government official, even if they're going to lose their prestige, their wealth, and their position of authority, where are the examples nowadays of senior leadership that says, you know what? I will put all of that on the line because this is wrong or something needs to be done. I don't see a lot of examples of that. And, and what I see is more of the, in the senior leader positions of obfuscating, chicanery, anything they can do to either get on by, keep the status quo, or help themselves. Now, I'm not saying this is across the board, but we see a lot of it in senior leadership. And then unfortunately, they turn right around to the younger generations and say, oh, they're such a mess. Well, I'd like to flip that equation a little bit and say, listen, we need to start looking at our senior leadership and us as a citizenry needs to demand more of that senior leadership and really think about the decisions that we make, in, in whether we elect people, hire people, who we give our money to, spend our money with, you know, that provides them authority and influence. And, and it's us that's giving that to them. Yeah. So we need to demand a, more, a little bit more. And you know what? I, I do hold that hope. I, I'm very much an optimist, and I'm very optimistic about this country. Um, I think there's always concerns in a republic and a democracy such as ours, but I am very optimistic with the younger generation I see. I know they like to text, they like to take photos, they like to do this, that, and the other. I, I got all that. You know, if it, if it had been 50 years ago, we were worried about the influence of Elvis on our young people. So there's always something. Yeah. But I see a great opportunity 
with this young generation. And I had, like, a, you know, I spoke with a group recently, and I told them, and I gave them some examples of, of a radio man, young man, 19 years old, working with me, you know, didn't know anything about running an air operations of a Marine Corps battalion. In six months, I handed him the radio, said, guess what? We're simulating, I just got shot, you're running this thing. And for 24 hours, he did a phenomenal job. Had the confidence and the ability to step into that position and not act arrogantly and not, not act foolishly and abuse his power, but do it for the good of that whole battalion. You know, I see things like that, that sacrifice that I think is inherent in some of these younger folks. And they, they have a much more global perspective. Yes. And, I, and I don't think there's this anger of against leadership, parents, whatever you call it, because the folks that we have in senior leadership right now, I think they grew up in an era of having a lot of anger against authority and leadership and parents and government, but yet now they're trying to institute those as the status quo, like you must believe in government, you must believe in leadership, and you can never question us in authority. So. I don't know, I hold, a, I hold a lot of optimism for this young generation coming behind me for what they're going to do with our country and for our country and for the world for that matter. Yeah. So, and I hear many, many people say, well, it doesn't matter whether you vote or not. All the politicians are corrupt. There's nobody honest anymore. And I don't care to vote. Uh, you hear this, people are discouraged. And I wish, sir, that you could be heard in every middle school and high school all around and let our young people see yeah. you and what you stand for and what you believe in. Well, I'm trying to. I know on Veterans Day I'll be going to speak at a school here in, in Greenville you. at the Traveler's Rest, and I'm very excited about that. Well, we have that website, uh, and I hope it's been up there, and <laughs> I will keep it if you didn't get it. But I really, uh, I think we, we as parents, as citizens, as grandparents, we have to make make our voices heard. I agree and it's just like anything in society and you know there is good leadership out there and I think some of our elected officials, some of our military leadership and some of our you know business folks out there, they're really good leaders. And, you know whether it's all just the bad people are getting the, all the press well, or that's part of it. we need to demand it. You know what? We need to look in that barrel of apples and say guess what? There's a lot of good apples in there. And now guess what? I'm gonna remove these bad apples yeah. and let's remove them and let those, those good apples come to the forefront. They're there. We just, we gotta demand it we as a citizenry. We have to absolutely be astute ourselves and, yeah. and know what's going on. Cause yeah. I will say this, you know, you see these government officials, military officials, business people doing bad things. Uh -huh. They don't look right, don't smell right, don't sound right. <laughs> These young people know that. They know it in their DNA, you know, yeah. but they're seeing it, and then they're seeing what they're getting away with, and they know it's not right, but they certainly, they don't think they can do anything about it, and I'm here to tell you they can, and they will, and I think they're really going to. So that, that's, that's why I stand on leadership in our country right now. Well, you have been a blessing to <laughs> all of us, and thank you, Major, thank for you very coming. much. You've given us a fresh way to look at things and think about things. Well, and, I hope so. And, and you've shared your hope with us. And Major Michael Middleton, United States Marine Corps, retired. <laughs> and uh, don't, don't stay retired too long. Come back and visit <laughs> with us. I will. And wherever you are, I just want to say God bless America. We'll see you next time.